WRKS.com. WRKS Pickens Jackson. All systems go. Live from the Whiskey 61 Lounge inside the Bank Plus Studio. It's now morning. Live in the studio. It's the Out of Bounds Show with Low Bounds. Streaming live worldwide on the Out of Bounds radio app. And on your radio at ESPN 105.9. All set. Well, let's go. The Zone. I'm on remote from Startville this morning, so we'll go with the 601-995-1059, right? 995-1059, Farm Bureau Insurance call in line. Twitter handle at Bow Bounce, brought to you by Ace Bolt and Screw, powered by DeWalt Tools, and then your Mississippi Ag John Deere tractor text line is 601 885 Three seven seven six eight eight five three seven seven six. Want to say good morning. Hope you're doing well. And um, well, thanks for making us your sports and entertainment show of choice. Be heavy college baseball today. We've got some football topics to to work through this morning, which are very exciting. It was a big weekend in Starkville and Oxford. I've got Blake Maney with me. I'm your host, Bo Bounds. And uh, we've got an 11 a.m. game for Hale State today as they'll play Campbell um, in the first game of maybe two. I mean, you're in the regional finals, but uh, Mississippi State has two to play with. Campbell does not. So, uh, as you know, if Hale State wins the first game, it's over. They go to the Supers, and they will host uh, Notre Dame. Um Ole Miss and Southern Miss, Blake, at 12 today is winner take all. Winner take all in Oxford mm. after Southern Miss beat Ole Miss um, last night 10-7 to in what was a wild, wild game. So we've had some good baseball over the weekend. We've had some crazy baseball. And, uh, you know, we've got teams like Florida that were knocked out 0-2, 2 in barbecue. For uh, Kevin O'Sully Sullivan in your own home, in your own in your own home, brand yeah. new home, Ugh. Man. woof, brand new stadium, and you go, oh, you were preseason number one by a mile. Yeah, yeah, we thought that they would uh, dominate this year, um, and we thought Vanderbilt would dominate this year. And although Vandy was good, they didn't necessarily dominate. So we were off on that in February. We thought Florida and Vandy would just. I don't necessarily say run away with anything, but um, maybe built them up to be what they were, you know, more than they were. Anyway, Florida is out, um, but all eyes will be, you know, Oxford and Starkville. Those of you that may have a flexible schedule or retired or whatever, um, you can make the game. And uh, those of you that have something else going on, then what's great is you can watch it um, in your office or at a, a very long lunch with friends, whatever. So um, here we go, Blake. We don't. I mean, we don't know who's pitching. Maybe nope. M- maybe Cody Adcock for for Ole Miss. I think we received a text on that uh, for Mississippi State. I don't. I don't know. Cade Smith, Fristo, um, Harding. Maybe I don't. Har- those those Harding, would be the three. I, I would think. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Um, True Maroon says hello on the Mississippi Ag text line. He says he's headed to the grind. I hear you, baby. We're, we're, we're already in the thick of it. We're, we're all ready in the bunker, and we're ready to go. Um, so, Blake, this is going to be nerve-wracking for both fan bases today, but Ole Miss cannot afford to lose to Southern no. Miss. No. What does this do? I mean – I know we're putting the cart before the horse, but it's a legacy question. It's a state pride question. It's a, I mean, there's a lot on the line, I hate to say, for one game for Ole Miss, but it certainly feels that way. 
I think you nailed it right there. Yeah, there's. Uh, it's just what it. It is what it is. The yeah. pressure is there. We want to win, and we want to go to Supers in Omaha in, in with the two programs. So, bottom line is Bianco desperately needs a W today for Ole Miss to advance. Mississippi State can't drop two to Campbell. They'll be uh, absolute meltdown if that happens. So here we go. Hopefully, 11 a.m. baseball. I'm looking out the window right now. It is very, 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 very overcast. But it is not raining. Um, And it looks 10 to 20% here, uh, you know, throughout the morning and and afternoon. But I don't know if, you know, the app that I use is necessarily the best one by any stretch. So, anyway, mine says 10 to 20%. And uh, actually, it kind of goes up right at first pitch. So, that'll that'll be interesting. Hopefully it'll it'll hold off, and then I see some maybe coming through in Oxford, and we'll give you another one. Yeah, ten to twenty percent in Oxford, but that's not till noon or one, and they start they move their game up to noon. So there you go. Everybody's going to want to know who's pitching, Blake. You know, uh, yeah, it's the question of the century, especially when you're Ole Miss and you felt like you were heading into such a great situation last night with Drew McDaniel on the mound, and yeah. then it just didn't obviously occur that way no uh boy you get up four to nothing and then you're thinking um we could blow them out right and uh sean says uh why is everyone stressing it's easy to get to omaha well uh i could tell you this it is going to be a fun but stress-filled day for both Hell State and Ole Miss you know we had some guy Nikhazy was phenomenal phenomenal over the weekend um, McLeod was really, really good. Uh, Mississippi State ended up, you know, um, absolutely hammering Virginia Commonwealth on Saturday night with Dak Prescott in attendance, Blake. But, That's right. Uh, VCU had not lost. They had the nation's longest winning streak, had not lost since April 11th. And MSU kind of turned the tide on them, although I thought they left still. I, I really thought. You know, they had several, so many more moments in the game to get a big hit, yes. and they didn't. But yes. it worked out as far as walks and hit by pitches and, and did put the ball in play, you know, some. Um, but anyway, hey, they took care of business, and they scored nine runs in an inning. And, you know, Florida State makes an error, and uh, Ole Miss won 3-2 to two over, over FSU. It was a gift, really. I mean, there was no reason to – for the Florida short Florida State, sorry, Florida State shortstop to rush the play when Tim Elko when Tim Elko is running down the first baseline. I mean, he had all day, and boom, wild pitch. Ole Miss takes advantage. Nikhazy, um was on point, other than the two bombs, and and they pulled away. So here we are on a Monday, and. Um, did Arizona win last night, Blake? They, they did, up. late into the night. So Arizona and Notre Dame are already set as the opposite regional or super regional opponents for, Thank you. for Oxford okay. and Starkville. All right, so I knew Notre Dame won. Yep. So if Ole Miss wins today, boom. And Notre Dame won well, by hitting. Well, I guess hitting, if either team wins today, they go to Tucson. That's, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Notre Dame won by hitting, I, I believe, 16 home runs in three games. Are you serious? I'm not even joking. Yes, 100%. They've got a guy named uh, Big Nico, and uh, he hit five home runs in three days, including a grand slam. He's built kind of like Ole Miss's Kale Baker, uh, but maybe a little bit m- m- more athletic looking, and he hits monster like 450-foot home runs. Wow. Okay. All right. Why do you think that there is a record number of home runs in the – I know you saw that too. Yes. Why do you think they're they call it the the BB Core era? Is yes. that right? Yes, correct. Okay, so there's 236 homers hit so far in this year's NCAA regional action, and it's a record since the BB Core era. What do you know why that is, Blake? Uh, I I honestly have no idea why this. So last year was a pretty big year. I think they it's I think it set the record last year and it's gone up. I think there's okay. Remember how we talked about this with Brantley and some of our other baseball guys? There's a concerted effort from the game to look at launch angle and hit home runs. And so you'd okay. see teams in general like Arkansas 
Arkansas is built to go scoreless for three innings and then put five runs on the board with two homers. You know, I mean that's that's just kind of how it's how teams are building themselves now. Go long or strike out. Not Mississippi out. State. I mean, I know they did yank three out of the ballpark on, I think it was three, on Saturday night. Two back-to-back solos and then a two-run homer, I think, by Cam James. But, um, huh, okay. Well, congratulations to Hale State. They've got two to play with today. And Ole Miss um, and Southern Miss, two in-state rivals. Are they in-state rivals? I guess they are. Anyway. Two, uh, two Mississippi teams getting after it today. It's going to be exciting. Buckle up. Here we go. Everything's on the line for the Super Regional today in Starkville and Oxford. You're listening to ESPN 105.9 The Zone. Let's talk Julio and Aaron Rodgers on the other side. The Big Board. What's on the Big Board? All right. Good morning, good morning. Welcome in to the Out of Bounds Show, 105.9 The Zone, ESPN. Hale State uh, is in the winner's bracket. They have not lost. They will play at 11 a.m. today, weather permitting, against Campbell. Not sure who they'll throw, but we're hoping Steve Robertson will join us at 8 a.m. today. Looks like Steve was up at 3 a.m. posting his podcast, so... I don't know if he'll make it up or not, but if he does, we will uh, we will ha- have him on. So Mississippi State um, has not lost, and it's a double elimination tournament, so you can figure that out. Um, Ole Miss and Southern Miss have both lost, so it's winner take all. Winner take all in Oxford. Whoever wins goes to Tucson, Arizona, to play the Arizona Wildcats. As Blake said in the first segment. Um, Arizona punched their ticket to the Super Regional late last night. And Notre Dame had already punched theirs, I think, midway through the day yeah. yesterday. Dominating fashion. Yeah, dominating fashion. So if, if if Mississippi State wins, Notre Dame travels to Starble. And whoever wins in Oxford travels to Arizona, Tucson, Arizona. Can you tell me the last time Notre Dame visited the great town of Starville, Mississippi? Was it 2000? I was at the region. That's correct. You nailed it. Okay, so I was at the regional in 2000. And um, Travis Chapman, I think, did something big that day. But the Florida transfer, I think the kid's name was like Ty Martin or something, hit a bomb in the game. Now, Maneri was... What Maneri was um, the Notre Dame coach at that time, Blake. And, Isn't that uh, interesting? Isn't that yeah, surprising? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyway, Mississippi State won that regional and went on to go to a super regional. I don't remember where. Mc, McMahon had two pretty tough supers. I think he played one at Cal State Fullerton and one at uh, Clemson. But I may be wrong there. He did make a College World Series, and then he went to two Super Regionals in, in what, four years? In Maybe that 2000 90. Regional, Notre Dame beat Mississippi State 7 nothing to force a final championship game. And in that game, Mississippi State won 10-9 to to advance okay. out of the Regional. Okay. Paul Maneri, yeah. That was uh, 21, well, yeah, I guess 21 years ago. Paul Maneri and Notre Dame were in Starkville. And there you go. And then the next year, McMahon would take the Florida job. And uh, Paul Maneri wanted the Mississippi State job, and Larry Templeton hired Ron Polk. And the uh, Yeehaw. Rest is history, my man. The Out of Bounds Show is powered by Mississippi Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Center. Any age, any sport, any injury, they've got you covered. MississippiSportsMedicine.com. Show is also presented by Independent Roofing Systems. The number one commercial roofing company in the state of Mississippi is Independent Roofing Systems. Roofing.ms. Want to welcome you in. Blake Scott with me. We call him Blake Mania sometimes. Sometimes he's the Blakey Blakester. <laughs> you know how many people stopped me this weekend and called me by both of those names? 
Did they really? I'm not even. I don't get called by anything other than those two names now by random, like people who don't know me. So I have people that come up to me in Starkville and other places and go, how's Blake Mania doing? I swear they come up to me and they say that to me. They they see me, and I guess because of the beard I stand out. I'm not like, you know, it's easier to notice. So they yell those words at me from wherever they are and however inebriated they might be. Right. right. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Um, hey, I do want to let you know that I had lunch at Two Brothers oh. yesterday. Mm, jealous. Took my kids there. And uh, so we started off with the pulled pork fries. Let me walk you through everything real quick. We started off with the pulled pork fries. Well, Ella Hall doesn't eat barbecue, but Wilkes and I hammered it. And... Um, <clears throat> And then Wilkes got the wings, in which he's like a kid in the can- you know candy store when it comes to their wings. And then Ella Hall did shrimp tacos, so it was a it was a huge win. I think that was my third time at Two Brothers since Thursday. Anyway, hopefully T Powell. I know that Muriel's going up before football season, right by Mangum and Dak. So I look forward to that one. Hopefully being up by you know August one, a picture of me what? wearing headsets or something. I was going to ask, what would your like. If they made a statue of you or if they did a mural of you, what is your pose? What would you well, look like? Well, my pose is, I, well, hopefully I'm laughing or smiling and wearing a headset because... Yeah. Talking into the microphone. I've had a blast yeah. doing this for 17 or 18 years. Um, yeah, so I, hopefully Terry Powell and and Barton, the thirsty gringo, and Barton will, uh, will get that going for us. But anyway, back to sports. Um, Julio Jones is now a Tennessee Titan. And A.J. Brown and Jeffrey Simmons, as you could see from the Twitters, are very, very excited about it. And you could kind of give A.J. Brown credit. He did this unbelievable video monologue uh, several weeks ago. And, um, boy, he's, he's like Dak. He's a get-it kid. But off the charts, intangibles, all that stuff. But AJ was hilarious a month or so ago, Blake, when he was started kind of the recruitment in a joking way, but also in a way that said, "Hey, Julio, get get your tail here so that we can get better." But I think that's exciting, man. Julio probably has another two years, um, you would think, left in the tank. I mean, he's taking care of himself, and. Um, Hey, Tennessee Titans, Jeffrey Simmons, A.J. Brown just got better. Now, how how much better? I don't know. But Blake seems to think it could be, you know, he could move the needle a little bit. So. I, I think it costs them nothing, and it was a, it definitely improves their team. It doesn't make a Super Bowl contender yet, but you need one more piece. I, I think it's great for Tennessee, and I guess Atlanta. I mean, it can be interesting to see. It's Calvin Ridley and Kyle Pitts now. Kyle Pitts, yeah. 10,000 yards is for rookie season. Uh, True Maroon's laughing at me. He I know. Says, I saw that. The Mississippi Ag John Deere tractor text line. He said video monologue. He made a TikTok. Okay. Well, first, I'm not on TikTok. So, um, and I, I'm glad that that cracked you up. And uh, I do see some TikToks if Wendy shows me one, you know, that are funny. Somebody doing something funny. Or my daughter. But uh, I'm not. I'm already on way too much stuff. And uh, if I wasn't in this, you know, we're in the business of PR, branding, marketing, and so on. And, um, yeah, I'm not on I'm not on TikTok. So, anyway. Is that bad, Blake, that I'm not on TikTok? No, stay off TikTok. That's smart okay. of you. I feel like I'm already on too much. No, stuff. you're good. You're doing the right things. All right. So, Julio, Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers have yet to uh, kiss and make up. And I'm sure you all saw the article over the weekend where the Packers president, Mike Murphy, I'm sorry, Mark Murphy, um, talked about the fact that they haven't gotten on the same page yet. And then he went on to give the general manager of the Packers a uh, a big-time vote of confidence. I mean, so what there, are you that's, doing? That's a great way <laughs> to just, you know what, just go ahead and throw up all over Aaron Rodgers' jersey. Um, I'm confused as to what. You know, I guess I don't know if Mark Murphy is one of those guys that's super smart but has zero people skills or maybe self-awareness. We all know those people. Um, but to to say that you want to uh, find the solution with Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers and then give Brian Gutekunst a 
you know, big time pat on the back and we love you, who's the general manager of the Packers, that makes no sense to me. So, I do. You, here's the question, Blake. Uh, tomorrow, I guess, is the day. Do you think he shows up tomorrow? I don't think so. Okay. All right, there we go. Uh, also, John text in, um, LSU is holding the rope for Maneri. They're surviving, Blake. Right? All right. LSU one game away. The Out of Bounds Show is brought to you by Independent Roofing Systems, number one commercial roofing company in Mississippi. That's Independent Roofing Systems. Independent Roofing Systems, locally owned and operated since 1980. And uh, their track record speaks for itself. Independent Roofing Systems. The show is also brought to you by Mississippi Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Center. SEC Insider Hit coming up next. Brought to you by Farm Bureau Insurance. Welcome in. Good morning. It's game day. Here we go. All right, good morning. Welcome in. Uh, Hell State baseball at 11 a.m., weather permitting. Ole Miss at noon. Hell State plays Campbell. Ole Miss will play Southern Miss. So here we go. Uh, the, the Ole Miss game, Southern Miss game, the Southern Miss-Ole Miss game is winner take all. Mississippi State can lose one and play again. Double elimination. Again, they haven't lost. As you know, rain delays, all that stuff yesterday. So, there you go. Um, Out of bounds, 105.9 The Zone, ESPN. Who's going to throw for the teams? Ole Miss, Southern Miss, Mississippi State, and so on. Kind of surprising that VCU is not in the regional finals. And, uh, you know, you can't sleep on Campbell. I don't think when you look at scores around the country, you can't sleep on anybody, can you? No, you have uh, South Alabama and South Florida playing for a title in Gainesville. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. And that tells you all you need to know. So, in Florida was two in barbecue. So, here we go. It's going to be fun. We'll see what shakes out. Your SEC Insider hit this morning is brought to you by Farm Bureau Insurance. Bundle your auto and home and save with your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent in any of the 82 counties in Mississippi or go to favorites.com, F-A-V-E, favorites.com, and get a quote in four minutes or less. We'll uh, we'll throw out the Farm Bureau Insurance call-in line, 601-995-1059. Here are the top stories of Monday coming out of the weekend. Hale State hasn't lost. They've got two to play with today, but they want to go ahead and punch their ticket in game one. Ole Miss and Southern Miss have both lost. Winner take all. Whoever wins goes to Tucson, Arizona to play in a Super Regional. If Mississippi State wins today, they will host either game one or two. Um, They will host Notre Dame this weekend in Starkville for a Super Regional. If Campbell somehow pulls the upset and goes back-to-back today, then they will travel to South Bend, Indiana, and Notre Dame. And so I think there's a lot of questions about starting pitching and so on. And then there's some people in the Ole Miss camp that want to shake up their lineup. And um, they want bench to bat first, move some guys down. For Ole Miss's standards, they've been struggling at the plate. And uh, so we'll see how that looks, and we'll see what direction Bianco and Lamonis and Scott Berry go. Uh, tip of the cap to all three men, really good baseball coaches, grinding through this season. But – you know, the expectate I mean, boom. The goals and expectations today for all three programs are to punch their ticket to a Super Regional. Now, <clears throat> Mike Bianco has been in Oxford for 20 years. He's done an amazing job. He is the reason why that place is packed and the stadium looks like it does and they do all these cool things in the spring and summer. He's been to Super Regional after Super Regional. He's made baseball matter uh, in Oxford. And he has driven, you know, a bunch of players to to Major League Baseball. And I don't know how much, you know, it'd be impossible, but just the the money that he's driven into the Oxford economy by making Ole Miss baseball special is remarkable. 
However, there is an elephant in the room. And the elephant in the room is the fact that, well, you're hosting a regional again. Um, You want to punch your ticket to a super regional. There have been some hiccups in the postseason. And then here's the problem. You're playing Southern Miss. And the last 20 years, we went from the big three to the two. Not Southern Miss's fault at all. I've always said this. If Ole Miss was Southern Miss or Mississippi State was Southern Miss, it would be the same way if they switched places with one of the two. But because the SEC got mega rich and Southern Miss was stuck without a conference, ended up in Conference USA, um, they don't even get a tenth of the money or, you know, twentieth of the money that Mississippi State and Ole Miss get from being a part of the Southeastern Conference. Very, very fortunate to be charter members in the 30s, of the SEC. So here's the deal. This is winner take all, Ole Miss, Southern Miss. And, you know, if you lose to Florida State today, um, it would be a tough spill, uh, pill to swallow, but it's one that could be ironed out over a couple of weeks. And then you turn your attention to football and Kiffin and Corral. Cool. Here's the problem. It's Southern Miss. It's Southern Miss. And Mike Bianco cannot afford to lose to Southern Miss um, on his home field in a regional, Blake. You agree or disagree? Oh, I think it's ten times over what it means to lose to anyone else. As as we said off the air, losing to Tennessee Tech the way they did was heartbreaking and, and it hurt, but it wasn't an in-state school that you had to live with. Mississippi yeah, and- or I would say Mississippi State oh. beating Southern at Southern, it is what it is because you're the big brother. When you're the big brother and you lose to the little brother, there's no you never hear the end of it. No. No. So this is going to be, I mean, again, pressure on the both t- Ole Miss and Mississippi State, the home teams. Um, pressure on Southern Miss, but maybe not as much pressure on Southern Miss as Ole Miss, right? Um, maybe not as much pressure on Campbell as Mississippi State. So, man, when when you're 20 years in and you, you've had a heck of a run, but only one College World Series appearance, um, you can't afford to lose today. You just can't. It's uh, fair, unfair, whatever. Uh, you cannot drop that game and have Southern Miss dogpile on your field, Blake. It, it's just uh, because that meltdown yeah. will be like, you know how in football our two fan bases melt down? Yes. It it will be like a, a huge football meltdown. I don't know if there's even a way, like, I don't even know. Okay, the South Alabama meltdown for Mississippi State was bad, but it was South Alabama. Again, it's like if you lost to Jackson State in football. Right. Or you law, you know, I just can't I can't even put into words what it will do to. And this is the tough part for a guy who's coached for 20 years and is inarguably a top 10 coach in college baseball, you would say across the country. Most people would say that's no doubt he's what he's done over the course of his tenure. But the lasting the lasting image of Mike Bianco's tenure in Oxford could be gold and black in the middle of Swayze Field. Woo. All right, so we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, again, if you're if you're losing to NC State, Florida State, Notre Dame, Oklahoma State today, even a Coastal Liberty. Carolina, right? It would be okay. You yeah. can't lose to an in-state G five team. Um, this one's going to be wild. So um, I cannot wait to see what shakes out. It's going to be kind of balls to the wall. As far as uh, people on the edge of their seat, people are going to try to work today, but but then you're yeah right. You have, the, <laughs> you, you have the ability to stream all these games, and most of you have TV setups or really nice either you know desktops, laptops, I mean, computers that are basically TVs too. So all sorts of options, which is pretty amazing. It's never been a better time to be a uh, a sports fan, 
and and the the fact that we could watch Ole Miss and Mississippi State throughout the weekend and other games. And by the way, that college baseball red zone thing, yeah, uh, play, squeeze squeeze play, baseball, yeah, that thing's awesome. Man, they have done a good job with that. So I love the red zone in the NFL. Um, that is it called squeeze play? play? That's what it's called, squeeze play. Okay. Squeeze play is so good. It's fantastic. Yeah, throughout the weekend when we were kind of bouncing around, um, locked in on that several times on ESPN, and they have really, really done a good job with that. So that's exciting, too, to uh, have access to so many games or updates, for that matter, as far as live look-ins and things like that um, as the regionals go. Now, Blake, you told me that Mississippi State has the only regional today where it's not a winner take all. Oh, well, them and uh, the South Alabama, South Florida, they had to f- stop their game in like the sixth inning last night because of rain. So they'll finish a game and could play two today. And then the only other one is Mississippi State Campbell. Everybody else is winner take all, including Arkansas, Nebraska, and LSU, Oregon tonight. Oh, that's right. Nebraska won. Ah, a little now, upset city. Be- would that be an epic upset or what? That's Duke losing in the, what, second round like they did with Zion or, or whatever it was, Sweet 16? Yes. Yeah, I mean, yes. that's that's Arkansas losing in their own regional would be catamount to, you know, Alabama losing in the first round of the playoffs to, like, Michigan State, you know? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, like, that's, that's Duke in basketball losing to Monmouth, right? No. Well, I mean, Nebraska's been okay, but like just to lose this or the way they it's just the way they've dominated Arkansas has right. all year long. Right. I mean, I think the way Notre Dame outscored opponents like 39 to 6 or something like that this weekend, I think people probably Good expected Lord. Arkansas to do the same thing in their regional. And they were on their way to that until uh, they lost last night to Nebraska. All right, so Arkansas and Nebraska, winner take all. Ole Miss, Southern Miss, winner take all. LSU, Oregon, winner take all. I mean, just one after another throughout the day. Here we go. This is going to be exciting. Postseason college baseball. Did you ever think that we would have this kind of electricity? In uh, We knew we'd have it, well, even, e- even a more modern. I mean, I know that Mississippi State has been packing the stadium since 1980, but um, – what it, it is such a a big social um, gathering party in Starkville and Oxford this day and age. I mean, other teams in the conference that are much bigger and considered blue bloods, especially in football, um, many of them don't have this kind of electricity. Thousands of people going through uh, the towns this time of year. I mean, I'm talking to my friends who are going to orientation at Mississippi State and Ole Miss this week. So you're like, I mean, how cool is that for some of these kids that may not have been up to campus much? And and you've got a packed stadium and all this baseball stuff going on while you're kind of going through figuring out your classes. I think that's that's pretty cool. Um, now, the probably the not cool part is trying to find a hotel – <laughs> overlapping NCAA regionals in Starkville and Oxford to go along with kids and parents driving in for orientation, especially from, you know, out of state. But either way, you know, you'll you'll make it work and, and happen. But it's a wild week. Now, this could be a quick turnaround in Starkville. If Mississippi State plays, um, uh, wins one of the two games and they advance to the Super Regional and host Notre Dame, I mean, you're talking about uh, – I don't even know what the super regional dates are. I don't know if they're Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Sunday, uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Um, I guess some of them could start Thursday. That'd be a bad deal. But um, it could be a quick turnaround where, where you've got another packed house in Starkville for the weekend, which would be out of control. And then I think when you add the fact that Dak Prescott showed up on Friday night at Two Brothers, smoked meats, right, and, and then goes to the game on Saturday, 
and then goes back to two brothers on Saturday. But the point is he was at the game. People were going nuts. When you have that kind of star power in the crowd, the heat and electricity turn up. And um, also rumors that Dak's going to buy a house in Starkville. And, and that would be huge. Whoever is close to him in the kind of Starkville Mississippi State family, man, if he did that, that's a game changer. You, you see former athletes at other schools do it. You know, Jeffrey Simmons spends a ton of time. here. I don't know if he's bought anything or not. You would think that he will. But there's some strong rumors that Dak Prescott will buy a condo or a house. I think he can afford it with his $200 million. <laughs> But, um, you know, hey, uh, that would – there. I guess there's some discussion that he wants to do some off-season training in Starkville. And, my God, when you're, when you're treated like royalty – when you come into town, you know, not a bad deal. So you can tell he's still got that, uh, you know, um, affinity for for the school and the campus and so on. Um, and we'll see how that shakes out. So, uh, Blake, did you see Dak at the game? Yeah, yeah, we hung out. Had no, uh, yeah, I did see. I saw did he him. Call you Blake Mania? Yeah, he that's right. To the show? That's that's right. He asked me when we were going to have him on. Uh, no, they. Uh, I did see him from a distance. I did not obviously interact with Dak Prescott. I have one time. Uh, I interviewed him one time, his senior year of college. That was the only time I've talked to him. Who knew he would be a two hundred million dollar man, future five hundred million dollar man? When you were doing that, I had right. all the hopes and dreams in the world, but none of the none of the knowledge. <laughs> Should we give? Let's switch gears. Should we give True Maroon credit for the Julio Jones trade? Did he orchestrate that? Well, he, didn't he call the Atlanta GM? I think he did. Yeah, Good Terry grief. Terry Fontenot. Fontenot from the New Orleans Saints. So so let me let's lay this out. AJ Brown's a wide receiver for the Titans. I think most of us know that. He, well, he's a phenomenal wide receiver for the Titans, and, um, and and of course Jeffrey Simmons is defensive lineman for the Titans. But AJ Brown has kind of been lobbying for Julio Jones to join him in Nashville. And I'll be darned if over the weekend the Atlanta Falcons and, and Tennessee Titans get it done. And as Blake said earlier, Tennessee really didn't pay anything for him. So even if he's not, like, super awesome but good, because he's 32, but, you know, who knows this day and age. I mean, you know he's a workout freak. Um, A.J. Brown will be the number one. Julio will be the 1A, and then you got Derrick Henry and Ryan Tannehill. So this could be enough for the Titans to, you know, punch their ticket and and maybe win the AFC South, Blake. I think 100% this is a great move for Tennessee. Um, I think we've seen, as, as Fred Smoot likes to say, and he said Friday on the show, you know, we've seen – less than stellar quarterbacks be able to manipulate the system and make things work. I think Tannehill is better than average. He's not elite, but he's better than average. You add a guy like Julio. I mean, I just think it makes Tennessee more exciting and more entertaining. And for us, as selfish as this is, having Jeffrey and AJ down there, the the better Tennessee can be, the better it is for us because it makes them entertaining. Yes, Absolutely. So here we go, Julio Jones with the Titans, and we don't know if the Packers and Aaron Rodgers will kiss and make up, but you've got a mandatory OTA tomorrow in Green Bay. Will Aaron Rodgers show up? You're listening to the Out of Bounds Show, 105.9 The Zone, ESPN. We're streaming live on the Out of Bounds radio app. The show is brought to you by Farm Bureau Insurance. The number is 601-995-1059. We've kind of walked you through the baseball regionals, the Julio Jones news, and, of course, uh, Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay and then the fact that Dak was in Starkville. I think you all know Hale State Ole Miss hosting games in Oxford and Starkville today. In, at, in Oxford, it will just be one game. One game, winner take all. Mike Bianco needs this one. And uh, Scott Berry and Southern Miss trying to punch their ticket to a Super Regional uh, for the first time in a, in a few years. And then Mississippi State, would this be Super Regional number five in a row, Blake? That would be correct. Five out of five opportunities for Mississippi State should they win today 
um, dating back to okay. 2016. And Southern Miss has only been to one Super. It was in 2009 when they made it all the way to Omaha. Under, Corky Palmer, my man. And Corky Scott Palmer. Barry was assistant. Yes. So, uh, yes, Corky Palmer led Southern Miss to the CWS. Was that 2009, Blake? It was, yeah, 2009. It's the only regional championship Southern Miss has. So they're they're looking to take advantage of one more opportunity right here. Wow. Okay. All right. So there you go. Southern Miss. Are you sure on that? They haven't been a super. I just. Since I just. I googled. You googled. I, I did the Google. Googles. I did the Googles. They've so been Scott, in. They've been in plenty of regionals. Okay. Plenty of regionals, but it's hard as a CUSA because. You don't. You very rarely get the nod, true, to to have a advantageous setup, right? And the one time they hosted back in 2017 was the year that Brent Rooker and Mississippi State beat them twice on a Monday. Oh, in Hattiesburg to win the regional and then go on to lose to LSU, if I'm not mistaken, at LSU. Correct under, under Andy Canizzaro. Okay, all right. So we're we're getting all this ironed out here on a Monday. Uh, Blake is live in the Bank Plus studio, the Out of Bounds Show, 105.9 The Zone, ESPN. Uh, Steve Robertson should join us in about 10 minutes. Maybe he'll have an idea of what direction Chris Lamonis and Scott Foxhall um, can, what direction they're going to go on the mound. And then what what does Bianco and his, his staff do today? So we'll see. Mississippi Ag, John Deere tractor text line is 601 601- Eight eight five three seven seven six. Blake, this guy Mitchell says that the Notre Dame Fighting Irish outscored their opponents fifty to five. There you go. I knew it was something crazy. They hit like sixteen home runs, including two grand slams. I mean, they were all over their regional. Sixteen home runs for Notre Dame. That's pretty crazy in three games. In three games. Are we expecting high scoring in the Ole Miss Southern Miss game? Well, I don't know why you wouldn't. I mean, I don't know who. Both pitching staffs are pretty depleted at this point. Okay, so yesterday was ten to seven, but more runs could have been scored. It was seven to four after one inning. Right. It was a forty-five minute first inning. Uh, oh my gosh! Yeah, the first inning lasted forever. Good grief. I think it's impressive that Tyler Myers, and then I'm not going to be able to say the kid's name for uh, for Southern, but they that they were able to settle in and actually turn it into a game for they did. five innings. They did a they did a really good job, kind of holding the line after that uh, first burst. You're right, of run. So, um, winner take all. Ole Miss, Southern Miss. I think Ole Miss would rather be facing any other team in the in the regional. Um, other than USM. And Blake just told me, I want to make sure this is right. Blake just said that Southern Miss has not been to a Super Regional since 2009. Whoa, somebody's calling us on the text line. Awesome. Sorry about that. Uh, Let me give you the caller line. 601-995-1059 is brought to you by Farm Bureau Insurance. Welcome in. Good morning. Hope you're doing well. Bigger news, Blake. Julio Jones, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers? It, well, Aaron, once it happens, yes, because he's plays quarterback. And we've never seen it. We thought we would see it with Deshaun Watson, and it hasn't happened due to other circumstances. We right. thought maybe we would see it with Russell Wilson, but it didn't happen. They got it worked out. If Aaron Rodgers moves, he would unequivocally be the most high-profile in his prime quarterback to leave his team ever in the history of the NFL. Oh, there's no question. That, that's a great point. The most high-profile quarterback in the history of the NFL because of his health to leave. It wouldn't be Peyton Manning because we didn't know what we had with the four neck surgeries. Aaron Rodgers, the most high-profile, not just quarterback, player in the history of the league to move knowing that he's got at least two, if not three years left to play, you know, really good football for someone else in the NFL. We'll see how that looks. The show is brought to you by Eye Care Professionals, their new location in Flowood. Bell Mead, Eye Care Professionals. Also, the show is brought to you by Two Brothers Smoke Meats, beautiful restaurant and bar in the historic Cotton District, pregame and postgame, 
at Two Brothers in Starville. Back in a second with Steve Robertson. With the hustle and bustle of being a busy mom, that leaves no time for an injury until it happens. My Mississippi Sports Medicine Super Surgeon used his specialized training and experience to repair my shoulder, and I didn't even need a referral. Now, I'm a super mom again because I have a super surgeon. 20 physicians, seven subspecialties, and one focus. You, Mississippi Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Center.